we uh, Kamala Nandini ma'am was talking about in-laws. That is how my life started is got married in 2005. I was here in Chennai and he worked in Bangalore, IT concern. Just immediately after four days of my marriage, he left over there. I was over here. Uh, from Madurai, we boarded the train. He boarded first on next platform. I boarded the train in the other platform. Yeah, his family is also of bigger sort. Six, uh, three brother, two brothers and three sisters were there, elder and younger. My family is also five. I am born with the, along with five members, two brothers and two, one elder and younger. Both the families are larger in size. So commitments, fulfillments, everything was there. What is the main uh, uh, thing is when uh, girls, when we enter into the family life, the financial part, it plays a major role. He was there in Bangalore. I was here. Both of them are earning. But the family circumstances, for more than one and a half hours, he was there in Bangalore, Accenture. After that, he came back to HP, over here. Within that one and a half years, all the settlements would have been done to his family. But the girls, we as new members, when we enter into the family of the other one, we have the dilemmas and our own parents, they also have their dilemmas with them. Yeah. Each, both the children are from different families. Both the children have been educated by their parents. If the guys alone are to be supportive to their families, why not the girls to be supportive to their own families? If we are being both of them brought in the same way. Because I am talking about the past, not now. Everything, it is fine. That is what that misunderstanding, it starts at the beginning. I hope most of the ladies will agree with this part. Because as soon as we enter as a new into another family, we have a little, yeah, whatever. I got around 29 years. At the age of 29, I got married. I know what the plus, minus, everything. So, yeah, not opposing. Opposition, we can ask over the phone for something. That's it. Communication was there. But anyway, the decisions will be taken from the other side. This has to be done. This has to be done. That has to be done. Yeah, we will wait and see like that. Since uh, my nature and my family, my father has brought us in that way, yeah, everything quietly accepted and we were moving ahead. So, at the starting of the marriage life only, everything within that two years or two and a half years, if girls are able to survive, most of the divorces will not happen. Because at the beginning, only the crisis it arises. Uh, most of them may have fun also. The thing is when... Uh, uh, in the church, we got married and immediately that wedding sari. I didn't give importance to all those cultures, etc., etc. Now, too, I don't uh, wear a Mangal Sutra. It is not uh, <laughs> that. Simply a chain I used to wear. That is how I was. Yeah, too much traditions, other things all. I don't have all those things. If we wear only, we have that, etc., Wedding sari I was putting on the hangers. I forgot to take that. <laughs> As Maru, we, we used to go to my mom's place. Uh, everyone were telling, you have left your wedding sari, wedding sari. Yeah, for me it was just a sari. Then I took, okay, okay, I just now I forgot it, I'll take it back. All sister-in-laws all were there. So I took it, kept it inside my, I was asking my dad, uh, Papa, take your suitcase, I should keep it inside. All these little, little things, all immediately we cannot forget our parents, na? All the other part of the family, they are getting irritated. You are married now? Why are you going and asking your dad? Uh, your husband is here. Immediately when it goes into our heads, 
வாட் எவர் த செயின் ஆர் மங்கள் சுத்ரா ஆர் வாட் எவர் இட் இஸ் இமீடியட்லி வி கேன் நாட் டேர்ன் ஓவர் டு த அதர் ஃபேமிலி கமிட்டட் இட் டேக்ஸ் டைம் ஃபார் த கேர்ள்ஸ் தட் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்டிங் கேபபிலிட்டி ஹேஸ் டு பி தேர் யா ஷி இஸ் ஆல்சோ யர் நியூ என்ட்ரி தட் இஸ் வேர் த மிஸ் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்டிங் லிட்டில் மிஸ் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்டிங்ஸ் இட் ஸ்டார்ட்ஸ் பிகாஸ் ஐ எம் ஏபிள் டு ரிமெம்பர் எவ்ரி திங் it is it has gone inside but sometimes i used to uh, talk to take to myself and in the self yeah we should leave off yeah erase everything yeah yeah now as they grow uh, older elder elder everything it is fine now but at that age i will be also one day or the other as mother in law but uh, even my mom she is also a mother in law but she doesn't do all such things there is a difference everywhere this acceptance naturally acceptable it is partly over there not accepting it how to uh, mold my children during the beginning stage that is what my small question over there <coughs> yeah i mean you have correctly mentioned that there are very very small points to begin with which create very big big problems initially if you see them they are very small and you think they don't matter right but if you don't understand those things and don't take care of them then they become big issues right so these issues should be handled not just after the marriage they should be handled well before the marriage right <laughs> so this understanding part has to be there understanding about relationship understanding about the feelings in relationship understanding about how to express those feelings in relationship how to take care of the expression of the other person and the feeling associated with it all those things i have to understand right this is the main purpose of education which we are not doing if we do it all these things in education then all of us will have that understanding you know we'll have the understanding we'll have the right feeling we would know how to express those feelings share those feelings with others when somebody else is expressing we will be passionate to listen to them you know and try to understand them evaluate not only what is being expressed but the feeling behind it okay and if there is some missing on the other part then i keep my feeling in order right and i try to be a help to the other if i do all this there will be no problem before the marriage and after the marriage also isn't it true and you know i will take one example <coughs> how small things make so much of difference mahabharat you have heard of mahabharat how many of you have heard of mahabharat okay <coughs> very nice enough number of people so this is a, you know describing about some happening you know? and there is a big fight at the end of it very big fight you know? and if you look at this whole progress of mahabharat at one time there was a settlement between kaurava and pandav right they were given some part of the kingdom whether it was just or unjust that's another thing but it was given and they started working on it and they made one palace okay and they invited everybody for the inauguration of that palace right indraprastha indraprastha you know that is delhi now so when they invited the palace that they had made the floor was constructed such that where there was floor it looked like water and where there was water it looked like floor right and duryodhan came and you know walked into and then he fell into the water okay. very simple incidents huh? that we keep doing we keep creating such kind of things yeah so it happened and when he fell into the water this draupadi laughed at him saying that you know the son of a blind is blind she wasn't serious about it 
she did not even you know thought that such things can result into such big outcomes and when she laughed at him duryodhan felt hurt he felt insulted right and he declared that you have insulted me in public and i will insult you in public right that's how the mahabharata started otherwise it was all settled right such a small slip on our part you know not taking care of the feeling and the expression of the feeling can result into such huge you know losses and it was such a huge loss that india as a civilization is finding it difficult even now to recover from it 5000 years yes yeah uh, j- uh, because i'll just share uh, uh, where n- none of the place i have shared it only with my family <coughs> uh, when i got conceived in 2007 my son was born uh, the day when we both went to the doctor and it was confirmed on that day evening uh he was here in hp in otp he used to work we were staying in gudwancheri at that time for four years i was near to the campus so the day uh, that day evening i was talking to my mother in law over phone for something and that has been transferred to my husband and when he came to home uh he immediately pushed me out of the gates he locked it lock the gate and he went inside at that time i didn't leave my peas my any other thing i stood on the stairs i sat on the stairs and i uh, this incident it immediately reached to my home and everyone was here on the same street but on the other side they were keeping the doors open ya yeah, priya will be coming 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 it was around night 8:30 9 o'clock so it was dark i was just waiting outside okay what to do let it be whatever it happens we will see i was waiting but that patience nowadays girls they will not have because as a grown up both both of us my husband and myself both are educated both of us know what it is what everything is right and uh, that was the first incident in my life when i got conceived the very first day it happened because all because of the other side not because of my own parents my own base so at that time if i have thought it in the other way walked out yeah it would have been gone to the uh, drastic and diverse or uh, my parents would have uh, requested or talked or etc then immediately my father called my mother in law told where is she she has to be back to the home immediately because people were waiting there priya is not coming out where she is at this dark night then uh, immediately after his mom's call to my husband he dragged me inside the house this is what it happened i told him yeah, let it be i was there all these uh, painful moments all i remember it but i want to forget it i was not every time being as a christian in my beliefs and rituals yeah we have to forgive not seven times 70 times yeah everything forgiveness it has to be there so this is how i have yeah, patience to the maximum limit no none of the girls will feel like that this has happened to me and uh, my husband is not that cruel at that moment he has uh, spontaneously reacted because triggering points it matters a lot for the girls from the inlas that is where the stand it is and how hard mind frame we as girls we females we have it so nowadays children or not or have been brought up in that way because immediately they go to the court for everything for the other sorts even small small things 
I accepted everything because I know how my dad and mom have worked out with everything, all the five children growing up, everything. Because that family uh, life, it is different. So we have to accept ups and downs. Yeah, I'll be there. But till now, till now also my brothers, sisters, everyone will be telling, Priya, what you did on that night? I told them, I was sitting on the staircases. Even my our automobile students were there opposite to that uh, flat, uh, opposite to my door. But that door was locked. I was thinking only my students should not see me during that night time that I am out. Only that was going on my mind. Nothing else. I was knowing uh, somewhere or the other. Anyway, we will see what it happens. We will go in like that. Thank, thank you. This is what I just wanted to share. Unfortunately, most of us have gone through such incidences. And we have found ourselves very helpless. Then what to do? That is the issue. Almost all of us must have had similar kind of experience, you know. Uh, Sometimes very torturous. Okay? You don't know what to do. Okay? You can't even share with others. Okay? So that is one thing, you know. What do we do? How do we take care of it? That is one thing. Traditionally, if you look, you know, any tradition which has survived for a long time, somewhere or the other, they have educated their children that if you accept a relationship, right? You have to accept it unconditionally and you have to fulfill that relationship unconditionally. Whether it is from the side of the uh, boy or from the side of the girl or from any member of the family. Only then things have continued to be there as a family, you know, as a society. Otherwise, it you know, such things keep happening and then they, it leads to the breakdown, you know, of the relationship. Today, unfortunately, we are not giving even that kind of training. I will not call it education. I will call it more like a training, okay? We are not giving those kind of training. So, nobody is willing to listen to the other and, you know, kind of sustain with that and you know favorable conditions and have commitment for the relationship so we are not giving that kind of training and we are not giving right education also so either you have to give training or you have to give the right education okay if you do not give any of the two then it's very difficult you know to survive with this family and the society and that is what is happening today you know, today this large number of divorces are taking place because of this that I am not willing to commit to relationship you also don't will you know you are not willing to commit to relationship and these incidents will take place because we are not educated for understanding relationship and living a fulfilling relationship so this is going to happen and it is going to multiply now so it is high time that we, you know, make this understanding of the feeling and living with that feeling of relationship an essential part of the education system. If we don't do that, we are doomed. True. Eh? <coughs> Bye. Bye. Yeah. Um, like uh, it takes a lot of time and effort to understand this relationship and working on it uh, and getting this connection with some person. But just one incident is creating a disconnection with the people. Again, how much time I took to build that relationship, it's quite triple or four time also I'm trying that connection again, it's getting tough. 
the disconnection is happening with the one moment of breaking in the feeling but say for example i hold his hand if it is like suddenly they uh, what what again to hold this hand it make a years and years and years because that one incident is creating me very strong my focus is only on that incident even before that thousands of good incident might be happen but that building of relationship is taking so much of time but the breaking is just a moment once that breaking has come again to reconnect it is taking again a lot of effort and time because of my own assumption so how to handle with this that is what we are saying that what do we do do we handle the incidences the incidences which are taking place outside do we handle the feeling do we handle the understanding that incident has created deep feeling now that is the problem it is not that incident that feeling how to yeah, work so on what that. is happening that your feelings are decided not by your understanding yes but they are decided by the incidences outside uh, true true so a wrong connection is made the definiteness of feeling will not come if my feelings are dependent on the incidences hmm. that is the crisis got it this is what we are saying right from the beginning, you know the feelings can be decided by the incidences outside or it can be decided by my right understanding if it is decided by my right understanding the feelings will become definite in regard of whatever incidents is taking place outside on the other hand if my feeling is dependent on the incidences outside then it will never become definite because so many incidences are taking place all around number 1 number 2 incidents with the same person can be very different at different time and different situations so this we have to understand that the incidences outside are the physical happenings right they are not going to decide my feeling i have to decide my feeling on the basis of my understanding right in fact if you look at this exercise one which is just you know and we have to see what is happening within our self right what is there in my imagination and particularly in imagination what is my feeling at this moment of time right every moment i have to be aware then i have to check whether that feeling i have at this moment is naturally acceptable to me or not naturally acceptable to me i am not looking outside i am looking within myself right and asking what is this feeling that i have now is it naturally acceptable is it not naturally acceptable step 3 i am asking does it lead to happiness and happiness harmony contradiction am i comfortable with uncomfortable with it all these questions i am asking outside or inside inside that is step 1 2 3 <laughs> if you go to step 6 i am asking what is naturally acceptable to me feeling of relationship feeling of opposition what is it can you check and find out for yourself what is naturally acceptable to you feeling of relationship feeling of opposition so if i am aware of this step 1 and 2 right and i am able to check in step 6 that it is the feeling of relationship which is natural then step 3 i can see that the feeling of relationship will lead to harmony and happiness and not otherwise so put together if i am working in ex- on exercise 1 what will be my conclusion at this moment of time i should have the feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition what 
what is the conclusion? Relationship, irregardless of what is happening outside. Outside has not come, right? That will come in ex step, exercise 2. Well, before that, I am working with myself, I am putting myself in order. What is happening presently is, the other person is not putting himself in order, is not working on himself, right? And he responds or reacts, depending upon the external conditions. I have also not put, into my, put myself into order. I also depend upon that ex external input. And if something goes wrong somewhere, then there are reactions and reactions. And it all aggravates. And nobody knows how to take care of it, how to stabilize it. So that, you know, positive feedback system, you know, the system becomes un unstable. Somewhere there has to be a basic reference, either in me or the other person, who will check with the basic reference and say that this is not right. And therefore, I don't go with it, I stop it. So if there is any feeling of opposition in me at this moment, because of the input coming from outside, I will go through this step 1, 2 and 3 and say that this is not something worth for me. I am not going to continue with it. Right? Then system will start getting stabilized. At least now I am not contributing to that negative, you know, loop. Okay? And by not contributing to this negative loop, what I am doing is, first I am making myself happy. Isn't it? If I had the feeling of opposition, I would have made myself happy or unhappy? Unhappy, right? So, now I have taken care of that feeling of opposition by way of my own, you know, self-investigation, self-exploration. Then I have ensured the right feeling in me, feeling of relationship, right? With that right feeling, now I am looking at the incidences. Now I can see that this person who is not behaving properly, he is already in trouble. What do you think? When you don't behave properly, when you are comfortable within or uncomfortable within? So I keep asking mothers particularly, when do you shout at the child or beat the child? When you are comfortable within or uncomfortable within? Uncomfortable within, right? Yes. So now when I have the right feeling in me, the feeling of relationship and I look at your misbehavior, the first conclusion is that you are not comfortable within. And if I can see that you are not comfortable within, what will I do? I will think of comforting you or I will think of, you know, hurting you. So the things will change, you know. The whole process will be now different. And if I do that, the other person is already disturbed, he may still react. Right? But deep down, he will have this feeling that, okay, this man responded despite the fact that my behavior was not proper. So slowly that space is created. And that's how this positive feedback can start. Yes. So this is uh, really, my problem is really peculiar. I'm very sure that I won't get a solution. But uh, I'm just seeking some strategies to handle it. Thing is, as you mentioned now, uh, any problem before that, it started in a, uh, in a, in a tiny level or a smaller level. So then it is getting uh, exaggerated or uh, just getting imagined or just maximized uh, based on the uh, other influencing factors. So this has happened to me and I, I just made a mistake 
with full of love and uh, with the full of consciousness <laughs> um before uh, 21 years back i made a mistake that i got married and uh, i just married uh, uh my name is santana lakshmi my husband name is paul davis abraham so everybody uh, understood what could be the problem between us and uh, in the meantime of our lifetime we have just successfully produced uh, two kids and uh, uh, one daughter she is now studying her uh, first year mbbs and uh, uh, second one son he is in 10th uh, standard so they are also deeply discussing about our problem but uh, they are also unable to get a solution and finally they are suggesting um, one uh, solution like better you both of you uh, getting separated or get divorced so because we are really unbearable of your argument because we have started a argument from uh, 2002 till now even uh, uh, before entering into uhv when you are traveling also we just uh, had a argument thing is who's the best god in our world i am i am a die hard fan of lord hanuman he is die hard fan of uh, lord jesus that's the only problem we are having sir beyond that uh, there are so many unemployment problem global warming is over there poverty is there and so much of i mean so many youngsters are still now not identifying their right path to choose their career so many things is happening but being a middle age people like us we are having only problem 21 years matured problem is who is the best god and uh, who is the best god to le- to resolve all the problem like a superstar so this is the only problem and uh, we are just uh, we are educated uh, as much as possible and he is also uh, a health inspector in uh, municipality i am a, a doctorate and associate professor in management and uh, the problem is when wherever we are going relative house and neighbor house friend house colleague house we are just become uh, they are just started asking us the problem solved or not both of you decided who is the best god in this world or not and who is just going to convert either of you successfully i am just not converting myself he is also not converting himself both of us trying hardly to prevent from each others so this is what and we are just uh, i mean giving advice to others giving suggestion to others we are just talking like a matured philosophers whatever problem students are approaching us and uh, our relatives are approaching us we are just giving them such a fantastic solution whatever pro- even like a um, isro level any rocket launching also we are able to give them a best solution but the others are just tired of giving us solutions so please suggest some strategy to handle this i am not looking for a solution sir give us some strategy to handle this argument and when is the possible time to put a pull stop at least come up to his whole family my kids are decided now we don't want hindus and christians we are decided to marry muslims <laughs> they are become a, they are just ready to take a oath we really after seeing you both we decided to withdraw both the religion we are we are started loving to muslims <laughs> but whenever i'm just giving advice to them all the gods are same that is even there is no god up to me hanuman is a siddha and he is a siddha he is a yogi that's all nature is the one and only god it to common to everybody when i'm started preaching like this to my kids i don't know where he could hiding himself suddenly he appeared in front of us he started no you are all talking beyond the things some fakeness i'll tell you who is the good god so after um, very i mean very next moment all uh, myself and my two kids will getting disappeared from him going to tirupati both of us going to all the churches shirdi 12 years that's what sir not possible to get the solution <laughs> he supporting me i used to support him ji <laughs> let's have a break now okay so i'll respond to your question about the strategy okay if i understand 
the basic dispute is about who is the hero right the basic dispute is about who is the hero who will liberate us yes what i see as problem is my belief that my problem will be solved by some hero whether it is x or y okay if you look at the whole that thing that we are talking about we are saying that we are the cause of our problem and we can find solution to our problem okay the fact that i am waiting for some hero to liberate me that itself is the problem whether x is the hero or y is the hero is not the problem okay so if that becomes clear to you then there is no problem okay eh huh? escape from this kind of argument no, no there is no problem in escaping the argument i am involving into argument there is no argument which is sustained from one side this is very fortunate whenever there is an argument what do you think can it be sustained from one side no so if i feel that it is not a relevant argument i don't indulge myself into it sir that is also tried out at once and many times but opponent has just decided that uh, silence is the mutual acceptance he just taken granted for yeah you are keeping silent you are not coming for any argument so you are also started accepting <laughs> yeah so if it is not a problem for me what is the problem in accepting it if the other person thinks that his hero is the ultimate hero fine what is the problem there is no problem but my husband is a superhero sir he never uh, i mean satisfied the word called uh, yes i agree your hero is the only hero but he just wants to keep cycle test model examination university examination to clear and prove him yes finally i accepted his hero is us only hero you, you so the problem is preparation for that cycle test model examination sir the problem is the feeling the lack of right feeling in you and lack of right feeling in him that is the problem that is where we have to work and if we can take care of that these heroes will not be the problem definitely yes. heroes not at all a problem for us yes that's it <laughs> so my hero is the only problem for me So, so that's what i just quite surprised people are talking about the domestic issues i am surviving in the international issues that's what no no this is not international issue it is existential issue bigger yes. than the international <laughs> yes <laughs> anyhow thank you sir okay thank you very much ji i have a question that is i have a sharing ji here 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 yeah yeah i am yamini Uh, this happened in the year of 1999 when i was 18 that time like uh, when i joined my college ug i have to go by bus it will take nearly 2 hours to reach uh, vilupuram from here chengalpet uh, so i have to take bus that is 2 uh, hours of travel i'm going by bus uh, i'm going to hostel also like on that day i was sitting at the uh, back seat one that is one seat before the back seat i was sitting and also the window seat i was sitting and there was a man behind me that i don't know i, I never conscious about who sitting behind me and all i was taken my seat and i was sitting there and that was my first year and uh, slowly after reaching after crossing madrandagam or some places in between i got a sensation of somebody is touching my hand by the side of uh, the chest like i got uh, first time i got the sensation next time i want to confirm whether some that man is misbehaving something he is doing so i was seeing that uh, the man is putting his hands uh, by the side so i confirmed it 
uh, fortunately i was the engineering student and i was uh, i was having my engineering paper like engineering drawing paper i have my instrument box with me <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i have taken compass from that and i was waiting for the next time of his approach like let him put his hand here like that i was unfortunately for him he has put his hand and i holded his hand and i was punched him two times and then he picked out of his hands in this situation i reacted much like i punched him i hurted him like if the same situation is going to happen for some of the girls nowadays they should after attending this uhp i'm asking they should react or they should respond <coughs> the answer and i'm making sure every time when i go after that when I, i'm making sure whenever i go for uh, travel like this in buses i used to have my safety pins i'm making sure whether i'm having the safety pin or i am having the hair pins whatever i am have i am ready with that every time when i go for a travel i am conscious in that <laughs> so what how the girl should behave now even the same thing is going to happen now for me should i react or should i respond yeah the response and reaction is from within but i hurted him How? yeah this is what i'm saying i keep giving that example if the if the son is if the boy is you know uh, putting his hand in the fire what will the mother do hold him by force you know this holding by force what is the feeling of the mother feeling of affection or feeling of jealousy relationship so that is important the reaction is and response is decided on the basis of feeling that you have so now what i did is correct this i'm coming to that <coughs> so if i want to draw the attention of somebody and he is making a mistake and i want to draw the attention i do some activity outside but while drawing that attention what is my feeling if my feeling is of relationship that is okay right drawing the attention by some means if the feeling has gone wrong then it is a reaction and there i have to be careful but what if what will happen to that person like he'll he'll start doing that to everyone else like if i'm not punishing or shouting at that point no, no i'm not saying don't punish Uh, uh. i did not say you want to hurt him for taking care of such incidents fine you know but you do not have the feeling of opposition for him that is what is important i am saying thank you ji thank you see i welcome everybody to ask question right in this class but i am certainly maintaining the discipline in the class okay i allow every one of you to speak but then still the content is being delivered that balance is being made isn't it not that i let this class to just keep talking anything so i have to maintain that order and i maintain that order with a feeling of relationship many times people ask question long question 40 minutes question and i will respond in 2 minutes because i have to make up the time you know so if so you you can decide what to do and i tell you if i am really aware and if i have the right understanding and right feeling most of the time i will not invite such incidences when we are inviting such incidences most of the time we also have some contribution this also we should remember you know yeah things will you know become very different for you slowly if you take care of this right understanding and right feeling part okay that like when we go by outbuses and all we cannot check who sitting front of me who sitting at the back of me we cannot be conscious all the times no sir yeah yeah that is uh. true so you decide but have the right feeling okay that's recommendation from our side bhaiya 
Bhaiya. Which yeah. side? Yeah. I'm Nancy and my husband's name is Shanmuga Sundaram. So, hope you understood. I also yes. travel in the same boat as uh, Sandana Lakshmi, ma'am. <laughs> so, we know each other from our kindergarten. So, very strong bonding. And uh, usually, women will have three knots, but I had six knots. So, very, very strong bonding. <laughs> so, two marriages to the same person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, we love each other till now. We love each other. He does everything for me. Uh, my day starts with a coffee prepared by my husband. And when I enter my home after my professional uh, part, uh, my evening begins with his tea only. So he helps me in all ways. Uh, not only me, uh, uh, we don't, I mean, my family doesn't have a boy, uh, uh, two girl daughter, girl children only. So he plays the role of a son also to my family. He cares for my family, even my sister. So such a loving person he is. And he is the only son to his mother. Um, his mother, unfortunately, became a widow when she was 30. A very young widow. So with a lot of uh, struggle, uh, she brought up his son. Obviously, mothers will be um, possessive over their son. And literally, tug of war will be there between me and my uh, mother-in-law for him. Um, so... It was, it was during 2007, January. Uh, that was the first new year after our marriage. My husband came to my home. Uh, we went to church, we went to temple and he stayed with me uh, that day. And evening he has to leave to his uh, workplace, Pondicherry. So evening we started from my place to my husband's place. We both belong to same place only. Just 10 minutes uh, uh, travel time from my home to my in-laws home. We informed her that we are uh, arriving there. But she locked home and went out somewhere. My, my husband has to catch his bus. The only reason was that he was, he was with me. <coughs> the entire day he was with me. That was the only reason. So like this, so many instances. Possessiveness is the only uh, reason. And even now, I will not serve food when my mother-in-law is here. She is there in NATO. When she comes here, she will be the only person who will uh, serve food for him. And whenever he is sick, he is hospitalized, she wants to be there with, his, uh, with her son. She will not let me uh, be there with him. So, this is continuing till now, till date. But she loves me so much. She cares for me so much. She is a very good mother-in-law. Uh, she will not do any harm to me, any cruel to me, any hurtings even. She will allow me to go to church every Sunday. She will not stop me in any aspect. But when it comes to my husband's uh, <laughs> point, there will be always a tug of war between me and my mother-in-law. And... Whenever any argument comes between me and my husband, all the flashbacks will appear. My point of argument will be will start from some point, but after this flashbacks, it will end up with some other point. I will even forget for what reason I started this fight. So in that way, my, my flashbacks, my histories will hit me. So how to get rid of these flashbacks? I, 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 f I know I am wrong. I should not think about the past. That will affect my happiness. That will affect my harmony. I know it very well. But I couldn't come out of it. <coughs> the one line answer is that work with exercise one and exercise two. <laughs> <laughs> I'll explain. I'll explain what it is. See, what is happening, the crucial point in most of these examples is that how do I decide my feeling? I have a feeling towards my mother-in-law, towards my husband, towards my wife, towards my friend, right? 
how do I decide this feeling in me? There are two possibilities broadly. One possibility is that my feeling is decided by some input coming from outside, from the other. Okay? This is one possibility. The other possibility is that my feeling is decided by my own self exploration, by my own understanding. Okay? So, take this example of mother in law. What feeling is naturally acceptable to me as far as the mother in law? Anybody concerned? If I go through this whole process, what do you think? You will have a natural acceptance for feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition? Relationship. When you have feeling of relationship, you will be in harmony and happiness or you will be in contradiction and unhappiness. On the other hand, if you have a feeling of opposition, what will happen? Disharmony and unhappiness. If I can see this, then in regard of what my mother-in-law is doing and how she is behaving, I will always settle for the feeling of relationship for her. Can I do that? If I can do this through this exercise one, then in regard of what my mother-in-law is doing, I will always have a feeling of relationship for her. Okay? If that is the case, then she is no more a problem for me. From the, my side, I have solved the problem. Whether she will improve or not, that will take time. Right? If I manage my feeling in the right say, way and I am in a state of harmony and happiness, then one outcome of that will be that my behavior at least will be proper with her. That I will be able to ensure. She may or she may not respond to it or she may even react to it. But even when she is reacting, Somewhere she realizes that, okay, I misbehaved with her, still she is behaving properly. So that acceptance, you know, will slowly be there, okay. And if that acceptance comes, she will be willing to listen to you, you know, at least she will start opening up. When she opens up and she is able to get to this kind of process, she will also be able to help herself. Because presently what is happening, she is suffering, right? Out of that suffering within, she is reacting. Now that reaction comes to you, you also get disturbed. You have a wrong feeling for her. You are also suffering. Now you react. Then that reaction come, reaches her, she is already in trouble. Now she gets more into opposition. And then this loop is completed. How do I break this loop? If I start working on this exercise, I can certainly break the loop. Not only this mother-in-law loop, any loop. Isn't it? Any loop. I am not dependent on the outside for my feeling. I decide my feeling by my own self-exploration, self-investigation, my own understanding. And therefore, I have a definite feeling in me, feeling of relationship, feeling of harmony, feeling of coexistence. Because that is what is naturally acceptable to me. With that feeling, I am in a state of harmony and happiness within. And I do want to have, you know, be in harmony and happiness. Isn't it? So I can ensure happiness, harmony and happiness for myself by way of having 
feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence every moment. If I am able to do this, nothing makes me happy from outside, unhappy from outside. Right? So that question which is asked, this happiness is your innate nature or is it an effect of something from outside? That we have to understand. Today we think that happiness will come from outside, right? Good food, good taste of the food will bring happiness. Good behavior of the mother-in-law will bring happiness, right? That's what we think and it does not work. So these are very good examples of the fact that the happiness is not ensured by the good behavior of the mother-in-law. In regard of what is the behavior of the mother-in-law, I can understand and I can ensure the right feeling in me through my own self-exploration. This is well within my capacity to do it. You know, this is already being discussed, but uh, let me bring in few uh, things to your attention so that you can intensively start working on it. So number one, it is said that I have to start looking into my own self and every moment. This is very important because something is going on in me every moment. Outside I am expressing some time, but inside this imagination is going on every moment. Can you see that? Can you see that your imagination is going on in you every moment? Can you stop it even for a moment? Yeah, so it is going on every moment. Therefore, you have to be aware every moment because if you are not aware, accident might take place. Outside you are expressing once in a while. Inside you are active every moment. Therefore, you have to be aware of yourself every moment. What is the situation now? Are you aware of yourself every moment? Are you aware of yourself every moment? No. no. Eh? Yeah. What will be the percentage for you at this time? What percentage of the time you are aware of yourself? What percentage of time you are not aware of yourself? Twenty-five percent. Okay. Yes. One percent. Yes. For Chandrasekhar ji, it is 1%. For Gita ji, it is 25%. Anybody else? Hmm? Eh? 20%. Okay, you find out for yourself. Important thing is that I am active within myself every moment. Therefore, I have to be aware of it every moment. She is saying that I am aware of myself only when I am driving. Right? In fact, anything you do outside, okay, who is deciding what to do outside? Me. Right? And I am not aware of myself. So I am not aware of what I am doing outside also. Can you see that? So, first thing is that I have to be aware. That is step one. I have to be aware and I have to observe my imagination. And in imagination, I have to observe my desire, the feeling that I have at this moment, the thought, the expectation. And while doing that, 
all that I am not reacting. Whatever be the desire, whatever be the thought, whatever be the expectation, I am just observing it and not reacting. It is good, okay, it is bad, okay, right? Only difference is that previously I was not aware, now I am aware. Is it clear? Is it clear? I have one question. You have something point to make? That we want to be in a relationship in the family, we understand that, but sometimes when opposition happens, it might be some small triggers. At that time, you really lose your cool and uh, later on only and later on you realize that you overreacted at that point. Yeah, which means you were not aware at that moment. Okay. You lost your awareness. Okay. That is what I am trying to remind. And you are <laughs> lost somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> no, I was lost that how to get that control because it is very, very difficult after a long day of work. When you go there, uh, even after attending the UHV session for the whole day, you go home, you think that Okay, we have to remain cool. We have to be aware of everything that is happening. But some trigger happens. You lose that for a moment. And I was wondering after UHV, how is it going to be possible for me to maintain this in everyday life? Yeah, the point that I am making here is that whenever I am interacting, whom do I pay attention first? Myself or the input from the other? Myself. 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 This order has to change. Okay. We have already made a wrong order, you know, order. We start paying attention to the other without paying attention to ourselves. And the accident takes place. First manage yourself. You know, we don't manage ourselves first and then we try to manage the outside. That is the trouble, right? So this step one is very important, very significant. This one, two, three put together is very important. Whether I am interacting with the somebody with somebody or not interacting with somebody, this one, two, three I have to do every moment. If I am doing this, no accident will take place. If I forget about this, and start paying attention to the response or reaction from outside, I am likely to meet an accident. So, have to be aware of myself. Have to be I aware have of to be aware of myself every moment. Every moment. And I have to give priority to this over my interaction with the other. So, whatever input is coming from the other, before looking at that, I must look at myself first. Is that clear? Because what you said, I have overreacted. That means, at that moment of time, you lost yourself. Otherwise, this evaluation will not come later that I have overreacted. If you are aware of yourself, you would have evaluated right at that, that time that it is an overreaction or it is a reaction. But that time you were not aware. You see, the general belief is that what is important is the world outside. What is important is the world material. The consciousness is also important, has not come to our, you know, understanding even now. We do not think that the self is more important than the body, right? We do not think that my state of the self is more important than what the other person is, you know, responding or reacting. What should I take care of first? My own self or what the other person is saying? 
Is that priority clear to you? Hey, can I'll, I I'll come. I'll come to the question. Let me uh, first uh, kind of just sum this up. So, if I become responsible towards myself, what I will do is, I will be aware of myself, aware of my imagination every moment, aware of the feeling that I have in that imagination, number one, that is step one. Step two, I will ask myself that the feeling that I have at this moment, is it naturally acceptable, is it not naturally acceptable, right? Step three, I will ask with this feeling, am I in a state of harmony and happiness or I am in a state of contradiction and unhappiness? These three things I will ask to myself every moment for every imagination, for every feeling. Okay? If I do this much, then I will be able to see that whenever I have a feeling of opposition, it is not naturally acceptable to me and it leads to contradictions and unhappiness. Whenever I have a feeling of relationship, it leads to, you know, it is a naturally acceptable to me and it leads to happiness. Right? If I can see this, then automatically in a very natural manner, my feelings will get purified. Right? The feelings which are in line with relationship will start having continuity. The feelings which are otherwise okay, in line with feeling of opposition will start reducing or dying away. That kind of self purification will take place. And this will take place in regard of how the other person is behaving whether he or she is behaving properly or not behaving properly, I can continue to work myself with myself and I can keep improving myself. Is this much clear? This we have to work every moment. So from yesterday when Kumarji was mentioning about this, you must have already started, okay? but I will keep reminding that every moment you have to do these three things, being aware of yourself, aware of your feeling, evaluating whether this feeling is naturally acceptable, not naturally acceptable to you, then evaluating whether it is leading to harmony and happiness or it is leading to disharmony and unhappiness. If you do this, you can keep improving upon yourself, right? You can keep getting rid of the undesirable feeling, unnatural feeling and your state of unhappiness, you can keep improving your naturally acceptable feelings and therefore your harmony and happiness. Irregard of what is the response or reaction from outside. This you have to do every moment. <coughs> so work on this. 4 5 we'll talk about in some other time. Working <coughs> on this 1, 2, and 3 every moment. You understand what you have to do? Okay. Yes. Sarangiji. <coughs> Becoming aware of the thoughts is definitely a wonderful thing. But only to limit to becoming aware. Sorry. <coughs> only. <coughs> Limiting ourselves to the awareness portion, is it sufficient or we need to do something beyond that? For example, <coughs> if I am noticing that the water is overflowing, the tap is open in my bathroom, water is flowing and that has started entering into my bedroom and it is getting flooded, that is only my observation part. That means I am becoming aware that something is disturbed now, something is not in order. But next step could be to close the tap at least. Similarly, when I am seeing that there are different kinds of thoughts getting generated within myself, it could be a positive thought, broadly I am saying, it could be a negative thought, it could be a neutral thought also, just like today is Saturday. It has neither positive nor negative expression. 
yeah yeah i get your point yes what is your question so question is should we become only aware of our thoughts or should we do something about our thoughts quality of thoughts this is the first question and the second question what happens when we are in a deep sleep mode and particularly when a person is in a coma state what happens to the thought process these two questions yeah that to begin with let us be aware number 1 number 2 let us evaluate so we are not just being aware we are evaluating evaluating whether it is natural or unnatural evaluating whether it leads to harmony and happiness or it does not lead to harmony and happiness do this and see what happens the tab will be closed or not closed by itself <coughs> work on it and you will see the result that is one response to you the second response is that step 6 and 7 when you go ahead you will see you know what is to be done if you have to do anything further but even 1 to 3 gives lot of you know makes lot of difference for you only observation will also take part of uh, generation of quality thoughts yes okay do it and see because see we are not left with no clue the design of the existence is such that we are all provided with this natural acceptance in us where we know what is natural what is not natural so that light of knowledge is already there <coughs> only thing is that we don't refer to it now when you are saying let us ask what is natural what is not natural we have started referring to that light of knowledge which is already within us right and in that light i can see what is making sense what is not making sense and if i can see that the choice will be made automatically so let's do it and see you know <coughs> regarding that second part when somebody is in coma i I think I'll postpone that for the exercise two because see this deep sleep means what I am not aware. That's it. So if you become aware, there is no deep sleep left. See now you will understand a lot of the psychology that we talk about. You know. today we talk about conscious subconscious unconscious super conscious right now when you start investigating yourself you will understand what is the meaning of conscious what is the meaning of subconscious what is the meaning of unconscious what is the meaning of super conscious all these things you will be able to explore presently we only know the words you know we do not know what is what does it mean deep sleep means i am not at all aware of it okay that is it this is what i am saying that there is some assumption sitting in you what you call as sanskar that sanskar is giving rise to some imagination when it gives rise to some imagination okay you say there is a thought when it is not giving rise to some imagination you think that there is no thought but then sanskar is still there if i become aware of my sanskar then i can see that there is no sleep i can be aware of it step 5 if you understand it is essentially talking about that sanskar which is sitting in me and which decides which decides on my feeling so to begin with i am being aware of my imagination but step 5 i am now being aware of my sanskar my assumption which will still be there in the deep sleep whether it gets manifested in the imagination or not it is sitting there that is normally called subconscious 
So now I can see what is my subconscious. The moment I see that subconscious, it becomes conscious. Isn't it? The problem is that we have not looked into my ourselves. We have not investigated into ourselves. Therefore, it seems something, you know, very big question marks everywhere. Now we have started into investigating into ourselves. Then we can talk about ourselves very comfortably. You, know, you can look at yourself. You can see what is happening. You can see what is natural, what is not natural, what is desirable, what is not desirable, what is leading to happiness, what is not leading to happiness, right? What leads to a harmonious state, what leads to a state of disharmony. All these we can see. And therefore decide. Most secret thing for you is you, yourself. You hardly know anything about yourself. You are a black box to yourself. Yes. Now you'll become, you know, you can open that black box and see. And you know, when you open and see, you realize that the thing about which you can know with all confidence is yourself. About everything else, you are making conclusion by seeing the reflection. Only you can see yourself directly. Isn't it? Eh? Because, because we have not paid attention to it, because we are not aware of it. Now that we become aware of it, it will no, no more remain the secret. It will become the most obvious apparent thing for me. Because I am closest to myself, isn't it? So I can see myself with utmost authenticity. That we have to start doing. That is what I was saying in the beginning. The shift from UHB 2 to UHB 3 is that in UHB 2, I could see that I am not just the body, but coexistence of the self and the body. UHB 3, through UHB 3, you will be able to see that I am basically the self. And I am also associating with this body. And once in a while, I transact something with this body. And that one, once in a while is less than 1%. This is another interesting thing. If you start observing, how oftenly you transact something with the body. Very less. So another thing. But when I become aware of it and start observing, I find that only sometime I refer to my body. And that sometime is even less than 1%. Most of the time I am busy with myself. Can you see this? Huh? Yesterday we were, you know, talking about this. And then Nancy said something. Nancy, you responded, right? I remember this, I mean, to her it was very surprise, you know. And I said, see, for last one hour, 40 minutes, you have been listening to, you know, what I am saying. And you must be really involved and, you know, reflecting over it. You have responded only once for a few seconds. What is the ratio? One hour, 40 minutes means 100 minutes. She has, you know, reflected over it. And she spoke for a few seconds. What is the ratio? Is it more than 1% or less than 1%? We are all sitting here and reflecting, you know. Most of the time we are busy with ourselves. But this transaction through the body is done once in a while. Like somebody said something to you 20 years back. These examples you have seen. What is the period of the other person is speaking that word and you listening to that word. One or two minutes, 20 years you are remembering and suffering. What is the ratio? What is the ratio? Eh? 
And where is that intensity? In the self or in the body? <laughs> it is in the self. That incident took place only for a few minutes. Right? Through the body that transaction took place. Self, what is it doing? It is carrying for 20 years. Suffering or enjoying, whatever it is. What is the ratio? Is it less than 1% or more than 1%? Maya, uh, you are talking now. For uh, one day, you are talking means always your self and other communication is taking place now. Unless um, self is controlling you, how can you uh, speak the correct? Uh, how can you walk? How can you? Uh, so uh, how can you say that uh, self is uh, only working and um, the body command is uh, taking place only be, uh, very less? I yeah. think uh, so what I am talking acted over it for days and days and years isn't it whatever I am talking now I have spent days and years listening to the concepts exploring myself understanding it then working out how to share it with others how to bring it into mainstream education, all this, you know. So more than 25 years I have spent. And out of that, I am speaking for, you know, few hours. What would be the ratio? For me also, sir, uh, for me also, um, actually I am uh, hearing some sounds. Okay, so I have to interpret. So again, uh, I need help of uh, myself and body, body to hear and then uh, connect with that, interpret each word and then what is that sentence meaning, uh, everything. So much work as to, uh, uh, I am doing now. Yeah, you using are doing the, so much of work. Uh, uh, yes. Continuously using my eyes, ears, uh, maybe brain also. Yeah, for example, this step one, two, three. Put together what is being said, be aware of yourself, observe your feeling, evaluate your feeling whether it is naturally acceptable, not naturally acceptable, evaluate your feeling whether it leads to harmony and happiness or otherwise. This is all being conveyed, right? How much time will it take for you to explore all this in the self? Just imagine, you know. Years you will take at the level of self. There are people who have been doing it for years, right? Still they find that they are not aware every moment, okay? It misses sometime, you know. Or many times it misses. Many times I have the feeling of opposition rather than feeling of relationship. All that has to be done at the level of self and it will take far more time than just transacting this information through body. The transaction is very little because you are not aware, you are not paying attention, I have to repeat it so many times. But in a sense what we have transacted through body, only this much that you have to be aware of, aware of yourself, aware of your feeling, evaluate your feeling, whether it is natural, unnatural, leading to harmony and happiness or otherwise. How much time will it take? One minute? <laughs> How much time will it take for you to explore at the level of self? Yes. Yes. Gita Ji has been working on this exercise for last three years? Three and a half years. Yes. Yeah. One good thing happened is today I did not sleep from the morning. <laughs> Next, uh, I was continuously talking. Now I stopped talking. I decided to observe so many things rather than to speak too much. First, and then react. Not so, react, respond. Sorry, respond. <laughs> yes. So whether the outcome is coming positive or negative, I can see the change. 
usually no i told i will not come to the department for 8 days i am attending uhv but when i saw the mail yesterday that irritation factor came immediately when they gave knock work but next day i decided why to get irritated if i get irritated my mind started to tell you only get bp okay already you are 40 then you only get heart attack why you want to get irritated whatever you know you reply so that feel i started to get yesterday exam duty selection was happening i came late i told the pressure i will be i <laughs> oh now see all are shock i am not shock <laughs> uhv i don't know uhv 1 and 2 i changed or not i don't know but by attending offline in actually i responded to supraja madam lastly only all gave the names immediately but when the end of the time of closing only i decided to attend uhv 3 uh, that is actual real truth so after uh, checking when i went there immediately the stomach started bloating oh ho oh, time is now 11 11 o'clock that break time oh they say they will open at 10 o'clock how will i choose the duty okay everyone might have choose the duty then mind again said why you worry okay whatever duty is available you select for everyone nine duty you also select nine duty so when that reaction came into the brain i selected okay but seven duty only i can select software issue then i cut it off then became cool these kind of changes transformations i can observe myself first that is the first positive attitude for myself next thing 90% you are asking how much you are influenced by other factors 90% i am getting triggered by external factors external influences external other self and not triggered at all by myself what is happening within me how should i be where should i change why should i get anger why should i get irritated everyone have their own actions and responses then why should i react rather than why not try to understand so these changes have inculcated in me first i want to thank you people and uh, next outside when i was standing today i forgot madam name because i have absent mindedness so ma'am came and said i don't know whether i see myself or not she has seen me more than me it seems she told first day you are irritated right when you entered into uhv absolutely 100% correct madam i told her but second day you changed a lot and now i see calmness in your face this is the first word i am hearing from her that she or he is able to see the calmness in my face yeah these are the changes i experience bhaiya ah uh, yeah thank you madam <laughs> <laughs> very nice in 3 days <coughs> if we can see some changes it is good even some little change it is good because what is important is that shift which you mentioned you know shift from being independent being dependent on the outside world you know the reaction or response of the outside world from there we are shifting to managing our own self that's a very major shift good but bhai up to may i will be like this but may 9th when i enter into the department and family <laughs> i decided not to change because i i was telling to another madam uh, in tamil maadu asa podu nu in tamil we have a word maadu asa podu that is only the cow has a tendency whatever it eats to bring it back and keep on trying to yeah, chew it again and again so cow has that control of chewing but our mind uh, has the control of keep on thinking about this again and again so why not bring it back to the mind and keep on remembering you or remembering in terms of kumar uh, sir kumar bhaiya or remembering in terms of uh, umesh bhaiya who told about super bliss and that states yesterday why not if we keep on thinking about it if somebody comes that irritation is that bond character for me immediately shouting immediately response all these things i cannot change myself immediately within one week or one year definitely it will take time i am a human being 
i am prone to all the responses and i am prone to all the extraordinary situations around me but if not i can change by at least one person that is a great change for me here afterwards see myself and smile what is good at me rather think like that than to analyze what is bad in others the opposite fellow let him change or not change that is his fate i can give some program for him but even with that program if he is not changing he decided not to change that i cannot do anything but why not i change when i change others seeing me respond in a different way attitude so that i learnt in this 3 days i thank you all to bring that small aspect of calmness i don't have calmness at all open to say yeah but that small attitude i can see myself not too much but very small bit <coughs> yeah even that small bit is significant <coughs> okay so with this one and two step 1 2 and 3 you have to keep working i can move to the next lecture yeah can i we can move to the next lecture eh huh? how to boxes ha boxes boxes remember you will like everyone have the competition of winning and have that attitude of winning no sir no ji that uh, how they'll accept these kind of uhvs like not only in boxing i am telling mom in sport generally in sport in the in the process of winning i i i will respond to this in the family we are boxing with each other right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with the unseen gloves <laughs> so first let us handle our issue okay then we'll see what to do with this, these people okay so my concern would be at least let me handle myself let me handle my relationship you know where i want to be in relationship right and i am not able to handle it so let's begin with that and you heard so many cases right <coughs> if i am able to handle these things we can take care of these games you know because games are after all you know <coughs> saying <coughs> as our expression okay if we have the feeling of relationship then we will probably design games okay which can be played with feeling of relationship isn't it learn to live with feeling of relationship <coughs> okay so this exercise one step 1 2 3 you have to keep working every moment right even when i am placing all these proposals you listen to these proposals with the background of you working on 1 2 3 right so pay attention to yourself first then to the proposal right yes sir sir coming to the utilization of body that uh, breathing is taking place continuously and digestion is taking place and uh, without my awareness so many activities are going on but i am not aware of that part yeah it uh, is good you don't have to be aware of them but uh, my i am utilizing that my body for more than uh, 40 to 50% then if i consider all those activities these activities are taking place in the body without your involvement why do you want to involve yourself digestion for example is taking place in the body right without your involvement only your consent is required you can disturb it many people who have problem of you know overthinking you know and confused thinking they keep interfering even with the digestion of the body <laughs> right when you get angry what happens to your breathing become fast right 
so you are disturbing your breathing well there is no need so we are many times we are disturbing the body unnecessary body has a system with which it works the self has a system with which it has to work there is a transaction between the two so there are certain rules of transaction if i understand all these three right then i can do the transaction with the body as and when required in a manner which is proper that transaction is very minimal i am saying right <coughs> if there is lack of nutrition in the body and there is a sensation of hunger right i pay attention to it i decide that some food should be given to the body and i instruct the body to do whatever is to be done you know go and to the kitchen collect the food you know eat that those kind of instructions i give then i am free of it you know it's fine the need for the nurturing of the body is taken care of right i can do that wherever my involvement and my decision is necessary i will take care of that part for the rest of the time the body is functioning you know with its own you know uh, harmony self organization i will let it do so isn't it so you have to clean your teeth in the morning you know clean your body give it a bath all those things you do fine and there also you will see how much time you take to take the decision about it that is your involvement the rest of the time you can keep thinking so many other things like you when you are taking bath right you don't have to involve yourself all the time okay you can do many things at the level of self and at the same same time keep giving bath to the body at that time what is it you doing you know the imagination that is going on in you is it leading to harmony and happiness or leading to unharmony and happiness you are taking bath and so many reactions are going on in you is it desirable not desirable can you take care of it now you can take care of it you have to take care of yourself 100% of the time you have to take care of the body as and when required and that requirement i am saying if you really work out the details you will find less than 1% but don't stick to this number you think it is 10% fine i have no problem okay <laughs> i keep telling this less than 1% just to emphasize this fact that it is very less so if you think no 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 it is 10% fine i have no problem take care of yourself first then take care of the body then take care of your relationship with other human being take care of your relationship with the rest of nature and that's how you can go on but first take care of yourself if you don't take care of yourself and you try to take care of the body you will meet an accident if you don't take care of yourself and you start taking care of the other you know person in relationship you are likely to meet an accident that is what is happening okay lecture 9 right understanding and its impact on human existence <coughs> we have already discussed these things but now we are trying to look at them from different perspective okay so we can go a little fast now <coughs> in this module 2 we have been trying to explore into right understanding in detail in a sense we saw that right understanding the knowing is to see the reality as it is in its completeness the self is the knower things to be known is the entire existence the process of understanding or knowing is 
awakening to this activity of contemplation, understanding and realization. This is already being talked about, just the reiteration you know, of it. So if I am awakened to the activity of contemplation, understanding and realization, that is the activities of the B1, then I am able to see the natural characteristic, the innateness and the coexistence, which means I am able to see the relationship, the harmony and coexistence. So if I am able to see the relationship, the harmony, the coexistence, then only I am able to see that reality, you know, in its completeness. So over and above the form and the property, I should be able to see that unit in its relationship with other unit, the harmony of that unit and the coexistence of that unit. If I am able to see that, I am able to see the reality in its completeness. And that is the process of knowing, that is the, you know, process of understanding. We looked into this process of understanding the knowing in some detail in last section. In this section, lecture 9, we will look into some details, the reality, some details about the realities to be known. So what are the things to be known? Three things. Number one, knowledge of human being. Number two, knowledge of existence. Number three, knowledge of human conduct. These are the things to be known. Ultimately, if you see, what is to be known is the entire existence. In that existence, human being is already there. In that existence, human conduct is also there. But when I as human being start this process of knowing, First, I have to know myself, right? Because it is me who is the knower. So I start with myself. Then I try to know the whole existence. And on the basis of these two knowledge, I am able to conclude about my role in this existence. Okay? So these are the three things to be known. Knowledge of myself, the human being knowledge of existence and knowledge of the human conduct. And this all is included in the knowledge of existence because we are also part of the existence. Okay. To see the reality as it is in its completeness, that is right understanding, that is knowing. So the entire thing to be known ultimately is the existence. Realities are to be known in the given sequence through the process of knowing described above. First, knowledge of human being, then knowledge of existence, then knowledge of human conduct. Right? And we will explore into them one by one. <coughs> right? So, realities to be known are these three. Impact of right understanding on human existence at the level of self and conduct will be will we will see in brief how right understanding reflects in the overall activities of the self and the state of the self how right understanding reflects in the human conduct a detailed discussion will be done after investigating into human being particularly the self in module 3 and into the existence in module 4 so with this preparation in module 3 we will investigate deeper into the human being the self and then in module 4 we will investigate into existence Now, let us look at this self. Okay. This we have already talked about and we will keep bringing this back again and again because these diagrams are very loaded with lot of you know uh, informations which we have to slowly get acquainted with. Okay. So, if you look at this self, one part of this imagination. Okay. And by now, I feel you are becoming aware of what this imagination is. Because now you are looking at your imagination, you are able to see your imagination, you are able to see the desire, the feeling, you are able to see the thought and the expectations. Right? All they are there. Can you see that? B1? 
taking place in you? How many of you are not able to see your imagination at all? Good. At least something you are able to see. So when we say imagination, we are talking about you, not about something else somewhere, right? That you have to start looking at, you know. <coughs> so when it comes to the self, the self has this imagination going on. Can we see this? Yes. And now we are trying to be aware of this imagination every moment. Okay? When we are trying to be aware of this imagination every moment, evaluating it, not reacting to it, right? Is it done from the imagination itself or something higher than the imagination? Yeah. So something higher than the imagination. That higher is somewhere here. We will locate that. So there is imagination and there is some activity higher than the imagination which is able to observe this imagination, also evaluate this imagination. Right? That we will slowly see. But at least we are able to see that there is imagination going on. There is some desire, some thought, some expectation. Right? There is some desire, some feeling is there. I can see it. Feeling of opposition, feeling of relationship, right? With that feeling of opposition, I have some thought of taking revenge. Then I have some expectation of doing something to him, you know, to take revenge. All those things are taking place in the self. <coughs> Presently, this is unguided. Okay, this is unguided and that is the problem. The problem is that your imagination, your feeling, your thoughts are unguided. They are mostly influenced by the input from outside. So if you get favorable input, you have one kind of imagination, one kind of feeling. If you get unfavorable inputs, you get another kind of feeling, you know, another kind of imagination and you are, you know, kind of like a football. Somebody kicks from this side, then somebody kicks from that side and, you know. But once this part starts working, then this arrow is important. Through this arrow, now my imagination is decided by my understanding my right understanding, by my realization, my understanding, my contemplation, right? So they start becoming definite. And it is decided by me, by my understanding, by my natural acceptance. They are not just floating. And like a football, you know, kicking. Somebody kicks from this side, it goes that side. Somebody kicks from that side, it comes this side. That is not what is happening. Now my imagination, my feelings are decided by my own understanding, by my own natural acceptance, my own awareness, right? Ultimately, what that would look like is this. Ultimately, what that would look like, you know, is this, that I have the realization of coexistence, understanding of the harmony, and contemplation of the relationship. <coughs> so all this process of knowing is helpful for me to reach there. And if I reach there, then that will start guiding my imagination, my feelings, my thoughts, my expectations. And then myself will be in harmony, in order, you know, in a state of harmony and happiness. All those details we will, you know, slowly see. <coughs> <coughs> and if this B2 is in line with this B1, 
then my behavior, my work, my participation in the larger order, they will all start falling in place. They will also be harmonious in nature, mutually fulfilling in nature. If that happens, this is the final outcome. That if I am clear about this, this will guide my imagination. I will be in a state of harmony within. With that state of harmony and happiness within, I will behave with human being properly. It will lead to mutual happiness. I will work with rest of nature in a manner that it will lead to mutual prosperity. I will participate in the larger order which will lead to fulfillment of human goal. And if I expand it, you know, ultimately it will lead to undivided society and universal human order. This is the natural outcome of my understanding of the existence as coexistence, as harmony, as relationship. That is going to be my participation and that is going to be the outcome of my participation ultimately. The undivided human society and universal human order. Right. What do you think? You want an undivided society or divided society? Undivided. undivided society. And what do we have? Divided society or undivided society? So many divisions. We just had some examples, right? Yeah. And we are busy dealing with those differences, you know. But if we understand the whole existence as coexistence, as harmony, as relationship, then ultimately our feelings will be same for all of us. And that ultimately will lead to a behavior, you know, of relationship with everyone, feeling of love for everyone, you know and compassion for everyone, which will ultimately lead to this human society, divided human society. And similarly, if we can see the harmony in this entire existence, entire nature, and if we participate in that harmony from family order to world family order, then it will ultimately lead to universal human order. Today, we have order or disorder? Disorder. Disorder everywhere, right? Like the example she was mentioning, right? That even traveling in the bus is no more safe, okay? So much of disorder all around. <coughs> so, as a human being, what will be my conduct? This is the description of the human conduct. That is how my conduct will look like as a human being. But this is possible only when I have the right understanding. Right? Understanding of the existence as coexistence, harmony and relationship. Sir, I have a clarification. Here, I am here. So actually, day before uh, yesterday night, uh, my husband went to his native. Yesterday morning, he might have uh, reached there. I messaged him, have you reached? But today morning I got the message, reached home. So, uh, now uh, yesterday, from uh, yesterday fully I didn't receive any messages or call or anything. And uh, so what should I, what type of response I have to give now? Because like this, at every moment at in our home, will be getting such uh, type of uh, problems. So, at this point of time, uh, how we have to respond and uh, what type of relationship should I have to handle such situations at home? This is what I am saying, you know, what is prob the problem is that my feeling is not definite. My feeling is all the time fluctuating with the input from outside. And if I don't get a favorable feeling, I am in trouble. Right? If my feeling is definite from my side, okay, you estimated that he would have reached yesterday, okay, 
you must have made a call or sent an email or some message and he will respond he might have got busy you know going back home and so many things to do now why do i spoil my feeling that is the trouble otherwise nothing unfavorable right he has not informed in time which you think is in time right and i am troubled now who is responsible for spoiling my feeling the other may also be responsible but i am responsible this should be clear that is step 4 you know you have to be clear that if you have a feeling or decided for a feeling the external input may start the process but it is you who decide for the feeling this clarity you have to have for example if you ask me a right kind of question i will respond to it right if you don't ask me the right kind of question what is the problem i don't have to get angry over it i can tell that this is not the right kind of question probably this is what you meant so i will put your question properly and then respond to it if i find that this question is not relevant to the topic that we are discussing i can tell you that we will discuss about this in the relevant topic okay what is the problem why should i get angry for you asking some irrelevant question isn't it then you are you describe something you know you take so much of time why should i get angry over it i assume that this is the way you describe right you take more than time, more time than i would have taken that is it okay why should i get angry over it <laughs> that can always happen yes so you know you will get this answer slowly yourself okay we are trying to provide you with the basic you know processes through which you can analyze yourself explore yourself set yourself into order in order and then handle all these issues you can do that these issues are not insolvable we are aggravating those issues because we have not taken care of our own self our own feeling okay so this is about the human conduct Sir. if you look at the sir overall picture of this human conduct ha ah. sir piche ka slide hmm uh, sir initially uh, i was uh, stubborn on uh, deciding desire thought and expectation separately then later i went like this that uh, it is okay for me to see it even if i cannot make the clear distinction every time it is uh, okay to focus on the feeling and desired part uh, so is this process okay then why this uh, separation is there like what is the significance of it to keep it separate the uh, it is important to see your feeling generally when you say imagination you are thinking of what to do outside okay that is not the feeling hmm. at the back of it there is a feeling so for example you are thinking of taking revenge from someone this thinking is not the feeling this taking revenge the details of taking revenge is based on the feeling of opposition that you already have now that feeling has to be un- 
seen hmm. and that has to be evaluated hmm. normally we are not able to see the feeling hmm. right so what we are saying look at your imagination and particularly look at the feeling which is at the base of that imagination okay and evaluate that that can be directly evaluated by our natural acceptance hmm. so if you are able to see the feeling and if you are able to evaluate your feeling and if you are able to set your feelings right mm. then our job is done then the details of the thought and expectations will be taken care of because if i have the right feeling i can work out the details of how to fulfill that feeling that is what is thought right and then i can work out what to do outside in order to fulfill that feeling that is thought and expectation so this is important this imaging part the desire part the feeling part is important and thus has to be decided by my natural acceptance it has to be in line with my natural acceptance and not otherwise and i can see my natural acceptance is for feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence so very simplified now i have to every moment ensure that my feeling is in line with relationship harmony and coexistence and not in line with opposition disharmony and struggle that is all that i have to settle if i can settle this much i can always be in harmony and happiness within irregard of what is there outside so in regard of who is attending this workshop right whatever whatever is his you know or her qualification okay whatever with the questions with all that i can be in harmony and happiness isn't it bhaiya and, and if my feeling is in order then i can interact with them meaningfully it may take some time to establish that relationship but from my side i can always be comfortable and work for that fulfillment of relationship yes maya <coughs> actually tsunami corona flood from nature we want to thank them a divided society has been brought into an undivided society by these three attributes but i feel for the people who lost for the lost their lives their family but nature is trying to predict and tell something as a nature i am undivided but as a human being why you are divided i am treating you all equally i am punishing you all equally i am reacting to you all equally then why you not react with each other equally so this influence i am able to uh, get and catch from the point of this all three uh, illnesses which came and stopped us to make a move yeah but see you know to get this message from the nature we don't have to have illnesses yes we, true we have enough message from the nature okay in our everyday life i mean take this simple example you have seen banyan tree how big it is so big you have seen the seed of the banyan tree how small it is what is the ratio of these two lakhs and crores right do you have to do anything for this seed to become a banyan tree nothing right <laughs> so much of harmony relationship you know that is small seed becomes such a big banyan tree without you doing anything isn't it so much of harmony relationship is there right and that banyan tree is coexisting with so many other plants and trees right it is not eating away other plants you know because they are small so there is coexistence there is harmony there is relationship that we can see with our 
you know, awareness of the self, isn't it? So we don't have to wait for the corona to take, you know, place and then give us the lesson. Okay, if you get the lesson, even with corona, it is fine. Okay. <laughs> but even otherwise, there is enough. If you look around in the nature, everywhere you see that relationship, harmony and coexistence. I mean to say, like, the care came without knowing who is she, who am I. Uh, nature acts as a teacher there. The care is coming automatically without knowing who are you, who am I. But he is also suffering, I am also suffering, I need to help him. That thought, before it would not come. So there was even a, a yeah. joke. Before Corona, luxurious life, luxurious car, I need a big home. This was the attitude of most of the human beings. After Corona, living itself is a big happiness in this world. So that was the attribute. It changed. Yeah. That's and fine. I would like to see contemplation also in a different attitude. Suppose we are all talking here. Suddenly imagine I am sitting in the second row. The earth is breaking into two pieces. I don't know who is Jagadish sir. Okay, I am there, striving there alone. I know that definitely I will die because all the other 59 are this side. A family is there. But for me nothing is there. Okay, and behind me maybe some lion also may be there or tiger also may be there. I know whether 5 seconds or 5 minutes, I will be happy, the happiest person in the world. After that, I will not see the world. That time, Jagadish sir throw a rope or something without knowing whom, who am I to catch me out, thinking that I am also a human being like him. So, this contemplation, how it is driving, I am thinking, all of us. So, once this contemplation is coming, it will drag us all to the, all the other levels as you said, and we all will be in the state of B1, guiding B2. <coughs> thank you, Bhaiya. Yes, thank you. I place this in the scheme of the whole existence. And if you look at that, this is how it looks. Have we talked about this existence as a whole? Okay. We'll come back to, you know, if you look at the whole existence, this is how it looks like, okay. So this much is already there. We as human beings have to do this. So the existence is already in this form. I'll describe this later. But this is what human being has to do in this existence. And if we do that, then we will be able to set ourselves right and set the whole society in order. Presently, we are in crisis. We have made the whole crisis, society in the crisis. This we have discussed? The human goals and all? No. Achha. Thick. <coughs> and the base of that is human education. The human education leading to personal transformation, leading to societal transformation. The crucial thing is to give right kind of education, right? To give human education, where each one of us as human being can develop this capacity to know about ourselves, to know about the existence, to know about our conduct in this existence. And if that happens, then each one of us can ensure being in harmony within and being in harmony with the world around, right? <coughs> the existence as such is already in harmony, in relationship, in coexistence. Ji, uh, I have a question here. Like, uh, hum I'll what is human wait, tradition? Wait, wait. I'll just finish this part. Today, if you look, in the society, what do you think? Your society is today like this or like this? And what is desirable? In ESP 2, we have must done, we must have done all this, right? Yes. So, 
what is desirable this part or this part allopath and where are we now yes we are here we want to be here and this transformation is going to take place through right kind of education so this transformation can take place through this education and all the effort that we are making through uhb is essentially at least begin this process of human education if the whole education system is not based on this at least make this as a part of the present system of education so that this transformation can take place from here to here or we can initiate the process of transformation taking place right so first it will lead to personal transformation from here to here so that is personal transformation and then slowly it will lead to the societal transformation from here to here and what do you feel it is it does it seem to be possible with whatever little effort we have made so when you have started working with this how do you feel yes 